Welcome to Tactical Talk, this is Zan Khan. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic from Pakistan's perspective. Today the topic of our program is on the balance of air power in South Asia with Air Marshal Masood Akhmer, who is an intellectual educationist and also a senior analyst. Welcome to our show, Air Marshal Masood Akhtar. This is Zan Khan. It's a pleasure to have you on Tactical Talk. Thank you. Let's get to the first question. Uh, a few months ago, a deal on F-16 jets was sabotaged by the U.S. Congress Foreign Relations Committee due to political reasons and also pressure from Indian lobbyists. Given the shaky history of U.S.-Pakistan relations currently, uh, shouldn't Pakistan have avoided uh, such a deal? Not at all, not at all. I think Block 52 is a very good aeroplane and uh, some anything six to eight aircraft that were supposed to come and join our fleet would have added some bit of punch uh, to, to the Pakistan Air Force. It would have become uh, ever more deterrent in terms of capability for the adversaries. Having said that, uh, actually, the Americans were looking at this purely through a prism of number one, Afghanistan, and number two, India, Haqqani. And of course, they were saying that uh, we are allegedly uh, committing some or having or helping uh, some, some terrorist act to be committed. And I think Americans also realized, uh, they, they, they of course took away the uh, 6 to 8 F-16s, but they also realized that Without Pakistan winning this war, nobody is going to win this war. So our decision was right that we should have added more punch to our capability, both offensive and defensive and deterrent capability. Uh, but the Americans were looking at it through a totally different ball game. And uh, they realized that they cannot go all, all hog uh, the way Indians want and the way Afghans want and the way themselves, that is the Pentagon and the and the. Uh, foreign office wants uh, that Pakistan is a useful ally. It needs to have capability. And of course, uh, we have not demonstrated that we, we have no aggressive designs against anyone. Uh, so 6 to 8 F F-16s, Block 52 would have done good to us. But we, we are quite all right. We have uh, an air force around 350 uh, medium tech, high tech aircraft. We have some fourth generation uh, Aeroplanes also, the Block 52, the JF-17, the Block 15s, uh, we have Mirages, we have uh, F-7s, we have PGs. Uh, so around 19, 20 squadrons, we have done well for ourselves. But these 6 to 8 would have done good to us. Air Marshal Masood Akhtar, F-16 jets uh, are gradually becoming outdated and PAF is focusing on inducting JF-17 jets that are being upgraded as well in the near future. However, uh, uh, are there any chances to induct the Russian Sukhoi 35 jets uh, that are considered top-notch and suitable for our needs? Good question. Uh, in fact, they, they, the F-16 is not getting outdated. Block 52 is right now better than almost any aircraft that the adversary has on its inventory, be it the Sukhoi-30, be it uh, the Mirage 2000. It's almost as good as the Sukhoi-30 and the Mirage 2000. The Sukhoi-30 may have a little more loiter time, etc. But uh, this aircraft has given us an edge. It has given us the BVR capability and a BVR, which is one of the best, uh, compared with the adder on the on the, on, on the uh, with the with the Sukhoi 30 and of course the Mika with the uh, with the with the Mirage 2000, which which is likely to come, Rafale is going to add a punch. Uh, so the fact that Indians have gone into the American camp in terms of a strategic relationship, the Russians have warmed up to us. So I guess I also read it in the papers that Sukhoi 35 is something that is being talked about and the Russians are open to negotiating this. Uh, Sukhoi 35, by the way, it, it, is, it is a slightly larger aeroplane in terms of wingspan compared with the Sukhoi 30, but it flies faster, it flies higher, it has got greater endurance, it has got greater punch, uh, it has got a better radar. And so it is good in all, 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 all terms of capabilities. But Sukhoi 35 is not the only thing that we are looking at. Probably we are also looking at the J20, which is a stealth 
by 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 any means, and we are we are looking at all those options. Uh, so Zuhai 35 would add uh, good capability that we are looking for in days to come. And obviously, we have to retire our mirages. We have to retire the we we have to see off the uh, PGs and the F7. These are the aircraft uh, that are the mainstay at the lower end of our training and capability. Uh, so Zuhai 35 would be a good thing, and the Russians are open to uh, considering selling it to us. I guess there are there are some talks that have gone on, and uh, it's not a bad idea. But saying that F-16 is outdated, no. Block 15 that we have, we have around 60, 70 F-16s now, and Block 15 that we had to start with, of course, is 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 a lower quality aircraft. But some of them are also being upgraded to to almost the Block 52 status through the F uh, through the Turks. So. Uh, with F-16, uh, Sukhoi 35, uh, the JF-17 Block 2, AISA, which is the uh, phased array radar, um, I think we will have a good capability. Air Marshal Masood Akhtar, in current geopolitical dynamics, the regional arms industry is growing rapidly with Indian defense uh, contractors vying for the production of locally assembled F-16s and other military products. What impact, if any, uh, would it have on the balance of power in South Asia? And are there any measures being taken to contain this? Official version, I do not know because I'm not privy. But the balance of power has been going up and down, left and right, uh, in terms of quantity and quality for both air forces. In quantity, they have always been better than us. They've been looking at something like 55 uh, squadrons. But very recently, I saw an air marshal, retired uh, three-star, uh, who had uh, who had a lot of woes, and he said that uh, the air force, instead of 55, right now is somewhere down to 34 squadrons. We are 19 squadrons or 20 squadrons, and uh, the serviceability, reliability has come down to almost 55, 60 percent. Ours, Alhamdulillah, is almost. Uh, 85, 90 plus percent uh, you know, on most of the weapon systems. So our chiefs of air staff up the line have done well in terms of both quality and quantity. Uh, so the balance of power has with with the uh, F-16 or the Rafales that are coming in or uh, the PAK-50 that Indians have invested in with the Russians uh, will add capability on their side, but we are not silent. People are the chief of air staff, the present uh, health man of the Air Force, Air Chief Marshal Suhail Aman is, the little that I know is fully cognizant of this. So uh, we are upgrading our JF-17s, Block uh, 2 are going to have a big punch, Block 3 is going to have a phased array radar, we've got the SD-10 BVR, we've got the A to C uh, missiles on the F-16 Block 52. We may not have a phased array radar, but we've got the BVR, we've got a, we, we, we have an array of weapon system that can come. And the fact that Pakistan Air Force was exercised in the wake of the so-called, so-called surgical strikes, which, which the Indians said they had launched, uh, and, and uh, we, we showed our capability and the Indian response was uh, swift. They, they know that they have limits to uh, exercising this balance of power which occasionally if not most of the time will go definitely go in their favor and the reason Pakistan Air Force both in quantity and quality all the time measures are being taken to match uh, we are looking at the J-20 probably we are looking at uh, upgrading our uh, uh, JF-17 with the best of weapon systems and obviously upgrading all the F-16s so by the time Mirages and PGs and uh, F-7s retire uh, we would have had enough. For example, we have the capability to produce almost 16 plus minus JF-17s per year. No Air Force is, is doing this. In fact, the LCA that the Indian Air Force has been uh, uh, working on, they started this 15-20s before us and it has not yet reached truly, truly the uh, squadron's operational capability. So pretty much a lot is being done. Rafael will add to their capability. The PAK-50 will add to their capability. In case the F-16s are assembled, they will add to their capability. 
but it is going to be done through HAL, which is Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. It has not had a very enviable history with the working with the Indian Air Force. Like they they are not confident of uh, uh, inducting the, uh, the the light combat aircraft even today. So although the balance of power will tend to go there, but adequate if not enough measures are at hand and available to the Pakistan Air Force to keep the balance of power somewhere in a deterrent, effective deterrent posture with, let's say, 1920 squadrons, medium tech and high tech, uh, fourth generation and let's say, uh, third, three and a half generation and four and fourth, uh, four and a half generation aircraft. We are good. We, we don't have a problem. Let's get to the last question. Pakistan Air Force's air superiority is well known in history and is considered one of the best in the world. What advice would you give to the members of the young generation that wish to serve in the Pakistan Air Force? You know, uh, Kamal Ataturk, the great Turkish leader, in Turkish he said, Istikbal Gyokler Dedir, the future is in the skies. And uh, I've flown for over 33 years in the Pakistan Air Force, flew, flew, flew fighters, flew all kinds of aeroplanes. Nowhere in Pakistan or in any country you get to do a job where you romance with the skies, with the clouds, you uh, go and fly in, in, in the white blue yonder, uh, get paid for it, serve the nation. Uh, live the legacy of people like Alams and Rafiki, who, who shot five aircraft and Rafiki, who chose not to give up his uh, number two uh, during 1965 war. An air force that has helped defeat an insurgency. No other air force has done this. And uh, it is constantly going up and up, both uh, in quantity and quality that we can afford. But in terms of training, I, what I can assure you, this exercise high, high mark that, that happened, the quality has really gone up. We have gone into complex exercises, uh, little that I know of, uh, that we were not doing, let's say, 10 years back uh, with the weapon system that are some of the best. So for the youth who wish to have an adventurous life, Pakistan Air Force is the way forward. For the young who wish to serve the nation, what better to serve in an air force, in an air arm that has helped defeat an insurgency? What better way to live the legacy of greats like Rafiki's and Alam's and to have a career which is full of adventure, uh, full of fun, full of opportunities to do well and then obviously get paid for it. So for the youth, there can be no better service where you need the inner calling. Whoever has got the passion, the commitment for the nation and the inner calling to have a career that can do good to him, to her, to their families, to the nation, this is it. Pakistan Air Force, no better way of life. Thank you so much, Air Marshal Masood Akhtar, for being on Tactical Talk. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. This was Air Marshal Masood after we were discussing the balance of air power within South Asia. Until the next episode of Tactical Talk, this is Zan Khan. Take care and goodbye.